So the classroom management method that I'm going to be discussing in this screencast is Rudolf Dreiker's logical consequences. Rudolf Dreikers was an Austrian psychiatrist and educator who developed Alfred Adler's system of individual psychology into a method for understanding the purposes of behavior in children. And he looked at how to stimulate good behavior with uh, rewards and to try to prevent bad behavior with punishments. He was born in 1897 in Austria-Hungary and he died in 1972 in Chicago. He founded the North American Psycho Society of Aldrian Psychology. And that society lives on today. So his legacy lives on through a group that he actually founded and created. His connection to classroom management is that his classroom management method is developed off the idea of social discipline. It has four fundamentals or basic ideas. The first being that humans are social beings and their basic motivation is to belong. Everybody wants to belong to a group or feel that they play an important part in the overall scheme of things. The second being that all behavior has a purpose. That nobody does something just because. They may not realize why they are doing something, but there is some thing, some incentive that is driving that person to doing that behavior. The third being that humans are decision-making organisms. That people think things through before acting, and our actions flow from our thoughts. The last one being that humans only perceive reality. And this perception may be mistaken or biased. Meaning that what we see of the world is how we experience it. Whether what we feel or experience is absolute reality may or may not be true. But nonetheless, it causes us to react to what we feel. This is what we go into as logical consequences model. Drikers believe that students only act up because they have a desire to have an active part in the group. And if they perceive that they're not wanted, appreciated, or welcomed, then they will react to misbehavior based on their understanding of reality. So he believed that there are four goals of misbehavior. That misbehavior is not just some aimless activity. That there is an end goal for misbehavior. The first one being attention getting. That students want to feel that connection. They want to feel a part. And this can be a good thing because we want our students to feel a part in our classroom. But it can also turn bad when students become class clowns or when students try to interrupt while we're teaching because they just want attention on them. The second one being the contest for power. And this is seen in everyday life when someone feels like they're outdoing they're being outdone by someone else, rather, that they want to react and show each other up. In the classroom environment, this may mean that the student feels like they don't have a voice in the classroom, so they rebel against their teacher. Seeking revenge, this is a third way. They feel like someone has done them wrong, so they respond negatively. In a classroom environment, this may manifest as a student reacting negatively towards the teacher because they feel like the teacher has wronged them, embarrassed them, or hurt them in some way. And the fourth and last one is displaying inadequacy. So the student feels like they don't measure up. And so to mask that area where they feel like they're not sufficient enough, they try to outdo things in other areas. Based on this idea, Dreikers suggested that teachers in a classroom must understand that all student behavior stems from these social needs. So though we don't excuse misbehavior, we can realize that it's often rooted much deeper than just a student wanting to act up. Dreikers believe that in order to help the students see when their actions are out of line, there must be consequences. He believed that every act has a consequence. For example, if I spend all my lunch money on sweets, I won't have money for real food. If I run with scissors, I can fall and get hurt. And these are natural consequences of misbehavior. Teachers don't facilitate natural consequences. They just happen by themselves. But what a teacher does facilitate is logical consequences. Logical consequences are not punishments, which are seen as a retaliation towards the person but rather as a consequence that is tied to the behavior. So though there might not be a natural consequence for misbehavior in a classroom, there must always be a logical consequence that stresses to that student that what they've just done is out of line. 
How do we make sure that our consequences are logical consequences? Well, Dreiker has five R's of logical consequences. The first one being that the consequence must be logically related or connected to the behavior. The more closely related to the consequence, the more valuable it is to the student and the behavior that that student just showed in the classroom. The second one is that it must be reasonable. A consequence should be equal in proportion and intensity for the misbehavior. You don't just make them write lines for a thousand years because they did something wrong one time. You have to make it reasonable because it's, it's not for students to suffer. It's for them to understand the connection between their behavior and the consequences. you got to be respectful. Remember that a student is still a human being. And we're not there to beat down a child or a student. We're there to preserve that student's self-esteem, but still stress what is good behavior and bad behavior. It has to be reliably enforced. Consequence should follow misbehavior. If you threaten students over and over again, but you don't act, it's ineffective. You've got to be consistent, or else students aren't going to take you seriously. The last one is it has to be revealed. Consequences must be known in advance for predictable behavior, such as breaking classroom rules. But if there is some misbehavior that's not predicted, that you didn't see coming, you must make logical consequences for that new misbehavior that was unexpected. You should establish those, and so from there on out, students know what is the consequence for that behavior. You can't just leave it undone. So what does this look like in the classroom? Well, the first one that is very common, the way that people use logical consequences in the classroom, is a you-break-it, you-fix-it policy. That children take some responsibility for fixing, as best as they can, any problem or mess that they've created. An example is a child hurts the feelings of another. So the teacher says they must participate in an apology of action by writing a note and including that hurt child in a friendly activity. The second way is a loss of privilege, that in classrooms where students have lots of choices and maybe a student has been waving around scissors or one of the classroom materials in a hazardous way, this teacher may step in and say, okay, you have been using that in a wrong way and you're not allowed to use it for the rest of the period. So it's a loss of a privilege and it lets that student know that if I do this behavior, then I'm gonna lose my ability to continue doing that. And the third one being is a timeout or taking a break. That when we see when a student's on the verge of losing control, beginning to disrupt to the classroom or about to just blow up, we have to realize that maybe sometimes the best thing to do is just take that student out of the room. And that shows them that, hey, my blowing up in the classroom is connected to the teacher bringing me out and setting me aside so I don't disrupt the whole classroom. So these are the three most common ways that people use this in the classroom, but there are other ways that you can make logical consequences a part of your classroom. So the potential for effectiveness is that it connects the consequence with the behavior. That students know that what you're doing as a consequence is absolutely connected to what they did. It's not something random and just pulled out of the air. And it also keeps the student from feeling like the teacher's just being harsh or mean. That the teacher has a reason and an end objective for doing what they're doing. And it also met, lets that student know that hey, maybe even though you might have felt like you weren't getting enough attention, what you were doing was out of line, and you can stress the good behavior instead of the bad behavior. So potential concern, though, with this being implemented in classrooms is if teachers are not consistent and if teachers are not willing to actually take the time to make set consequences for set behaviors, then it's going to show that that teacher doesn't care and the students are not going to take the teacher seriously, especially when they try to start implementing consequences in the classroom. So if you're going to use Dreiker's logical consequences in your classroom, remember to be consistent in what you're doing. Consistency is always key. These are my references for what I use to make this presentation. And I appreciate your time for watching. And no matter what classroom management style that we're using, let's always remember to connect our students to the material and also realize that we got to be there for our students. So no matter what method you're using, let's go out and teach our students and be the best teachers that we can be.